Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Books and Betches. Uh, this is not a regular book podcast episode. This is a mental health episode. So I'm Kristen, and with me I have... Erica. And Maria. Yeah, we've done a couple of these. Uh, you guys really like them. Yeah, two yeah. of them, right? We've done two of them. We've done two. Yeah, so it's been a while since we've sat down and chatted. I mean, we also took a four-month hiatus, so I figure now is like the perfect time to do this again a lot of things have happened um erica had a baby i started new medication like things that we could talk about hopefully help people listening who have the same whether it's problems or whatever you know as us so relate what just relate to us yeah relate to other people totally. to know that things are the things that you're feeling are normal yeah i think a lot of people are calling this what season three of 2020 and i feel like i really really relate to that in Mm. general um it just feels like it's been an interesting three years uh i think a lot of our lives have changed some of us now are working from home permanently some of us weird wish yeah it's just a lot of things have happened in three years so i think now is a good time to do this episode um i guess i'll just start it off since i have the most like to unload but yeah Um, I had a baby in October of last year, 2022, and um, he is a little angel. He really is, like, really, he's always slept really well, and um, he's just, like, I think that's made it easier that he doesn't, like, cry a lot, and, like, I mean, he obviously cries his baby, but, like, he's (laughs) not, like, he doesn't have colic, he's not, like, just, like, a constant, like, thing that you're trying to calm down all the time like um i described this to kristen and maria um just like earlier today that like some days you have good days and some days you have bad days and like every day is different and you just have to like keep doing it Mm. and it's just like some days are gonna be good and some days are gonna be bad and that's just the reality of it and Mm -hmm. like yesterday was not a great day he cried a lot and i didn't know how to comfort him and it just like it's hard when you don't know what you're doing and this is your first kid and you're like what the fuck am i doing yeah one thing that i do want to like mention and i've been thinking about this episode a lot this week is what i want to talk about and people always say like you don't know love until you know uh, until you have your own kid yeah and i don't agree with that wow i oh. don't agree with that hot take yeah. yeah i do not fucking agree with that because i would say like right now i love my child just as much as my dog mm. like oh yeah you're gonna, i love you're gonna piss someone i love Ma- i love maddie like she's my own See, i think this is so important to like say because i think a lot of people feel guilty yeah for if, not yeah. like yeah. yeah but i what i do think is gonna happen yeah uh, dogs and babies are very similar and people don't like to fucking compare them because like, <laughs> yeah so i'm saying like comparing can't you said it. <laughs> <laughs> right but they're very similar and in, in a lot of ways up into a certain point mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. up until i want to say like five or six yeah then you start getting more out of your child like you get a lot more back from your child Mm -hmm. but like up until like five you can literally like john did this to like some of our friends kids would like call the kid over like a dog and then like call (laughs) maddie over and be like see they're like they do the same fucking thing like you know what i mean like it's very similar in how you like that kind of stuff and um i just think it's unfair sometimes for people to say that because it diminishes people's yeah affections toward their dogs yeah and like the Thank dogs you for are Chris, yeah. Zena is my baby dogs are just as like you and and they've done studies that like the same parts of your brain light up mm. with your kids and your dogs yeah mm. it's you you can form just as strong of attachments yeah. to to animals and and not, i'm not just saying dogs animals in general yeah yeah Kristen's cats to your babies my kitties no totally but i think there comes a time where it changes yeah and i think that makes sense i think that also helps because it it, i see a lot of the kids versus no kids argument which has become a thing for whatever reason crazy people are upset if you say you don't want kids people are upset if you say you do want kids and it makes absolutely no sense whatsoever like let people live and do whatever they want but i've seen it a lot on the side of people being like oh you don't want kids well you'll just never know a love so special as like when you hold your baby for the first time you'll never know that you'll be empty inside you'll be it's pathetic like, your business like that's that's how people talk on the internet yeah and i think that that's not fair and i think that you saying that too might you know help somebody aka me if i didn't i don't know if i want kids yet but anytime i say i don't think i do that's the kind of response i get i've heard like, these the same response or a certain response said both ways which is so interesting to me. I've heard having children is the most selfish thing you'll ever do. Mm -hmm. 
having children is the most selfless yeah. thing you'll ever do. Yep. I've always thought that not everyone's meant to be a parent. Yeah. I've no. seen too many exactly. bad parents in this yeah. world to yeah. say that everyone. No. Not everyone deserves to be a parent. You just have to like if it like I know people who have kids because they don't want to die alone. They're like, oh, I'm, I don't want to be an adult and then not have somebody to take care of me. And I'm like, yeah, if that's the that's only how... reason that you're having a child, like that's, that's fucked up. sad to me. Like there has to be more to it, in my opinion, of why you want to have kids, or, you know, like have have a certain reason. But at the same time, if you don't want to have kids, that's fine. If you do want to have kids, that's great. That's fine. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know why we split these sides and like yell at each other over something I think and also if you don't so want to conceive your own children yeah. if you want to have a surrogate if you want to adopt yeah any type of parenthood to me is, is valid parenthood. yeah exactly yeah. exactly and even dog parents even yeah. dog parents i expect a mother's day card from both of you this year <laughs> <laughs> you'll get one how is like um, the post like how is mentally how are you feeling like i said like every day is a different day like yeah. they're there was one day, so John um, had a, he got COVID over Christmas, which was really fucking hard oh, yeah, because I, I basically like had my parents down here and we had all these plans and then basically in a matter of like 30 minutes, everyone left the house and it was just me and the baby and I didn't know if I had COVID because. I feel so dire. Um, yeah. It was just scary, you know what I mean? And like, so we had the house as like lived in for four days worth of people being here and like it was just a little messy and like mm. i had a be i had a newborn like a two-month-old newborn and everything was just so crazy like i ha i'm exclusively pumping which makes it really hard um to like find time in the day to do pretty much anything because if i'm not pumping then like i'm dealing with the baby and like he's just you know you constantly need to be like doing stuff with him like right. he sleeps for a half an hour an hour and it's like once you do mm -hmm. the dishes and then you're you have 10 minutes left you know yeah. what i mean like yeah. you just get into something and then you don't have any time left and you right. never know when he's gonna cry right. you never know when you're gonna be able to finish it. like the whole house is just like filled with like half done shit mm. all of the time yeah because you can't just like let you have to do you have to drop whatever you're doing to like yep. deal with him yep. you know yep. what i mean so john left to go to his mom's house to quarantine because we felt that that was what was the best course for the baby and me is like we'll run the risk of me not getting it because i i got covid and john didn't mm. twice yeah so we were like all right john leave you quarantine at your mom's house in your old bedroom and me and the baby will stay home and i had a mask on for three days until yeah. i knew it like it was safe like it was just and i like only picked him up when i had to mm -hmm. and like it's tough you have a two-month-old baby that like needs comfort and yeah. like he like it was just it was just really hard and it was scary like i didn't know if i was gonna give the i didn't know if the baby was gonna get it i didn't know if mm -hmm. i was gonna give it to him mm -hmm. i didn't know if i had it like and the house was just a fucking mess yeah. and i don't know if like uh, our house is pretty clean most of the time so like to have a house that was yeah. just like yep. yes lived in and there's dishes piled up mm -hmm. there's fucking bottles to be like cleaned That's like lot, yeah. it was just every surface of the house i couldn't even eat it gives doesn't, you it doesn't really, add it doesn't yeah. add anything to your mind it makes it even more stressful when yeah. a house is a mess i like that. i didn't have a surface on because everything of like i said you put something down and you can't get back to it. Yep. Yeah. So sometimes like shit just got piled up yeah. and I couldn't get to it. Mm -hmm. And I like, I was just, I had a break, I had a full like breakdown and I was like hysterically crying like for hours being like, I can't do this. Imagine being a single mom like that. I don't know how, I don't know how they do it. I literally don't know how they do it. Like a single parent is, oh, it's gotta be so hard. Yeah. And one of the, th so what I, I'm crying to John about this and he feels really guilty and whatever. And I'm just like frustrated and tired and you know, all of these things and you know people say all the time like if you need something like let me know i'm yeah. happy to help and it's yeah. like all right well calling i'm calling it in yeah so john called his cousins and was like hey like erica needs fucking help good like he needs she needs somebody to clean the house yeah good. and they should have called me i know you should call they, <laughs> came, they came over and they were like two little fucking angels nice. they brought pizza they cleaned the whole fucking house they That's vacuumed awesome. they did my laundry good. like i got to they they held the baby when i couldn't like oh. you know like they helped feed him they like stuck around and gave me some like social interaction yeah 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 um 
and I can't tell you like how much better I felt yeah. one because I had a clean house mm-hmm. two because like I just felt supported yeah mm-hmm. and like I felt like a huge burden and and all I can say after that like experience is like when you need help ask yeah yeah it takes a village is what people always say yep. like it's yep. hard to raise a baby by yourself I think you know having the right support is key for anybody who's going into this position like because I think everyone given the right circumstances will lose it yeah. In, in yeah. motherhood. Oh, of course. 100%. 100%. So you have to, like, when people say, hey, if you need anything, hey, if you just need me to, like, come clean, like, take people up on those things. Mm-hmm. Like, yep. don't be scared to cash it in. Yeah. Yep. You I know what I mean? mean? If people are offering it, if people are offering help, don't be embarrassed to say, I need help. I love yep. that. That's really good advice. I, I stand by that. Yeah. A thousand percent. And I was, I was embarrassed because I was like John I think John called him was like Eric's having a mental breakdown but like <laughs> I'm sure he didn't like, word it the best yeah. way <laughs> yeah like John didn't didn't do me any <laughs> <laughs> they came in all scared yeah, and and like, yeah. yeah yeah and they were kind of like uh like they were scared to come in the house but like you know for the most part it it, it again like and I I talked about this when I was when I was going through my depression is like you have to ask for help yeah and that's the like the end of all of this is you must ask for help. You if you have people that will help you, you need to just ask for it. I love that. That kind of actually leads into what I was going to talk about because I've been avoiding asking for help for how mm-hmm. many years now? Um, talking about you know anxiety in general. So let's we'll switch gears for a second and just talk about anxiety and how far I've come on my journey of not refusing to ask for help and then finally deciding, okay, I can't live like this anymore. Um, My anxiety has gotten so bad that like in meetings and stuff, I would black out almost and like my heart rate would be about 200 and I thought this is not healthy. I'm going Mm -hmm. to die young if I keep doing this. I need to ask for help. So I made a physical appointment with a new primary care physician and there is nothing scarier than having to say um, I have this problem. Like I don't know. I don't know what it was but like maybe because I'm already anxious in general but like sitting there I was shaking like I got like the nervous poops like I was like I got a poop. I also think it's our generation in a way. Yeah. Like we we are so needed to just rely on ourselves and like not bother anyone. Don't yeah. be a problem. Yep. So having to ask anyone for help is like, oh, I'm I'm a problem now. I I can't <laughs> believe I'm doing this. I thought I wasn't gonna. Well, how many of our parents said children like are seen not heard? Yeah, that's true. And that, that's just that's like the motto of the millennial. Going yeah. to anybody's house like don't ask for shit. Yes. Yeah. You're not don't thirsty. You're not hungry. Yep. You're. <laughs> yep, it's true and yeah. it's scary like you i'm don't so know. used to saying like when somebody's like do you want water and you're like no yeah. i'm good, <laughs> no, I'm good. Yeah. Thank you. that's so true that's such a good point point. and like so the nurse practitioner obviously or not the nurse practitioner the nurse comes in first and i was just like she's like is there anything you wanted to address today and i was like just fucking say it Kristen. and i was like yeah i've just been having like a lot of anxiety she's like okay She's like, let's do a little like questionnaire. And I was like, no, please no. And she like puts her little laptop over. She's like, I think it's easier when we look at it together. And I was like, that's very kind. It was so, so nice. Like it was great. Because my first thought is like, you have to sit there and stare at them on that crinkly paper. Yeah. Yeah. Because they don't let you sit on a regular chair like a human. No, she was great. I fucking hate the crinkle paper. Yeah. No, we did it together and it was nice. But like the more I answered the questions, the more I was like, this is a fucking problem. Holy shit. Like I'm not functioning in real life. So then the doctor came in. And for whatever reason, when I was explaining to him my symptoms and like what the issue was and like the physical stuff that I would have with my anxiety, I literally just started tearing up. And I was yeah. like, I was oh, almost and I was like, you can't fucking cry in front of this man for yeah. no reason. And, and he can like sense it in me. And he's like, OK, yeah, let's like start like a medication. And I was like, I guess I'm ready to start a medication. I guess you're getting pills today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the what I wanted to say was when I first started taking the medication, I started a uh it was like a free, not a sample, I guess. Yeah, a free yeah, sample. sample usually. Yeah, it was like a month long sample of a medication called Trintilex. Um, it's most of these like our SSR. But I don't even know how to like explain what these types of pills are. I've seen ads for it. Yeah. For Trintilex. There's different like, like SSRIs, SSRIs and stuff. And, I don't yeah, know what that means. So I won't pretend that I know what it means. All I know is that the Trintilex that he gave me, he said, this is a different kind of medication because there's no um symptoms for like you know the sex stuff there's no weight gain like basically the symptoms that might have been the one i took yeah the symptoms are like the least i took one that did not you couldn't you didn't gain weight yeah and it was great and so i was like okay cool let's try it right i got a one month sample for that month 
my life fucking changed. I'm not even kidding. I felt amazing. I would text you and I'd be like, I feel good. Like night and day. I want to go for a walk. I want to do this. Like when you're depressed and you get on fucking. It changed my life, dude. I was not. I remember she texted the group. She was like. I just did a meeting and I didn't even like freak out about yeah. it. I just handled a meeting so well. And I, I'm like, I'm like so I, proud. It yeah. literally, w- I, for me, it felt like I, did, I snorted a line of Coke in the middle of my day. Dude, like, yeah. it, I just felt great. I felt good. I felt like, I don't know, like I had clarity for the first time. Yeah. So then a month of this free trial is coming to an end. I find out that my insurance doesn't cover it. And since it's a newer drug, there's no like synthetic Equivalent. version of it. So it, it I was looking at $500 a month out of pocket. Obviously, that's not going to happen. I can't afford that. Fuck this. So I I said, I need a new option. I tried really hard to get like a doctor's form. And for some reason, it just wasn't. That caused a lot of stress. Like they just weren't getting it. And like it was a whole nightmare. So then he put me on Prozac or fluoxetine. Um, If any of you are taking fluoxetine, I would love to hear your experiences with it because I've been on it for almost three months now. I'm going to the doctor on Friday to tell him that I absolutely want to be taken off of it. Mm. Um, Complete opposite effect. I wish I remembered the medicine I was on. I I thought you took Prozac. No. No? I don't know. I, I want to sleep every day. I have no motivation. I feel like I'm overthinking everything. I have more anxiety than I did before I started medication. So... I'm done with this and I don't know what's going to happen next. And that's where I'm at. So I would love if anybody can like reach out and just, you know, any advice that you have or yeah, anything. Any oh, I was taking Effexor. Okay. Maybe so I'll look into that. You should ask them Effexor. for that. I'm going to write it down. Spell it out for her. Yeah. <laughs> text it in the group. <laughs> I'll text it in the group right now. E- E-F-F-E-X-O-R. All right, I'll check that out. And just be like my friend took this and yeah like what do you think if it if it's yeah, related yeah. at all yeah i need to change like this isn't this isn't working for me so i don't um, know i don't know what's gonna happen but yeah i like it, it's scary taking in an, an antidepressant and i think that a lot of people are like i don't want to be on medication i don't want to be on medication me, yeah. it's a stigma I, it's a big yeah, stigma behind yeah it. and it, it like and i think a lot of people hearing us talk about the first time when like when our mental health episode i talked about going on medication too and like it really does just it makes a difference and like you don't have to be on it forever and you don't have to like stay on it even long term but like just to pull yourself Mm -hmm. out of it and try different things like clearly one thing worked really well for me and this thing is not working for me yeah but what they say about therapy too a lot it's like not 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 all therapists therapists are gonna work for you true and i will i will say one thing that i noticed about myself and it's a problem that i need to address is like when i went to the eye doctor and they were like are you on any medication you don't tell them i was like afraid to say yeah i'm on prozac because i didn't want to be them to be like oh are you like depressed and like why is why do i care if they think that like yeah. even my gynecologist he was like oh are you on any medication and i told him and he was like he was like oh are you depressed and i was just like oh no i just have like this panic disorder and i was like why am i less afraid to say that i have anxiety than i am if i were depressed you know like yeah. that's that stigma that like i don't know how to like break out of i mm. guess and i think again it relates all back to the well i don't want to be a problem yeah. i don't want to be an yeah. issue to these strangers that i'm just meeting for the first time it's already taken me a lot just to get out of my house speak to you true now you're gonna ask me a triggering question thanks sir i'm just true. trying to get new glasses <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah i was really scared of postpartum depression because i would be, I too. Was, I would be too that's like, my biggest fear i never had depression i like n- now looking back at what i went through i realized what it was for what it was and i was like ready for something to happen right Mm -hmm. like and to me for me it was the lack of showers it was the lack of wanting to get out of bed that's Mm -hmm. when i when i look back on that i go i remember the feeling of not wanting to go into the like Mm -hmm. visibly or like viscerally not wanting to shower and just being like i don't want to do this Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and like now i want to shower every fucking day like i like my baby fucking throw up on me all the time and (laughs) and i'm like all right like i'm not there right you know what i mean and that's kind of my like check-in okay and my therapist was like anytime you have a change in hygiene like where that's you're you're not keeping up to like to par with your hygiene that's when you know you have an issue interesting so something to consider but um if you're 
like if you feel like you've had any changes in I your love showering. hygiene me yeah. too <laughs> Big um, i put the scalding hot water i burn same. myself daily me too <laughs> that's where i do all my thinking <laughs> yeah i love if I or just or shower. just my belting of my musicals in there True. just sing all day but yeah. i will say i do think i had a little bit of postpartum um anxiety mm. and i think that that's my biggest fear i have anxiety is that anxiety around hudson in general or yes. in yeah okay. i had i just i had like unending fear of sids Mm, yeah. mm-hmm. naturally i would too fears. yeah i feel like that's normal i, I would think too anybody, yeah. i think anything with a new baby would be terrifying like, that's everything yeah. everything i was just scared of everything i was scared of yep. like of him choking i was scared of this like he like choked on like something and he was breathing weird and i just like thought he was gonna die like yeah. it was just like spiral i feel like that around zina. other people's babies I i'm like zina constantly i'm always dude, afraid yeah. he's gonna die on me I'm, I'm always thinking about that. When I go to like other people's house, I'm like, is your baby supposed to be playing with that? And they're like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. why am I freaking out? I care about other people's kids and I check yeah. on them more than their own parents do. Yeah, dude. <laughs> like I, I just, imagine. I was just like so scared of everything. Yeah. And I think part of it was because I didn't know like new, what a newborn, new but yeah. like it was more than it. It also doesn't been. help that those. It was more than it I, I'm not saying your family did this, but I feel like constantly for new parents, the older generation is just like, stop freaking out. Yeah. You're fine. Oh yeah. my god, we did this, that, and the other with you, and you turned out okay. Yeah. I fucking yep. hate that because it's like you raised kids 30 years ago. Yeah. Yes. Do you realize how many people have died because mm-hmm. you guys fucked up? Yeah. And we've done research and been like, oh yeah, you guys fuck this up real bad <laughs> so now don't fucking do this yeah, they've yeah. changed sleeping positions three times yeah three fucking times you know what since we were you know what's sad too and i've been we i don't know kids. if it's because like we share socials like for books and batches and stuff but i think it's it's creeped onto my uh, my main uh personal account these like mommy uh groups like mm-hmm. facebook groups yeah and how yeah. Oh, if the one mom facebook puts groups. a picture up of their kid it's like thousands of women is like you're not supposed to do that Crazy. you do you want you don't care about your kid your yeah. kid's gonna die if you don't swallow him correctly and i'm like how are someone able how is someone con- um how can they even think about helping their own kid or even seeking out advice yeah. from somebody else without people just swarming you yeah it's not crazy i was scared i had him in a, a chair and chairs people don't like chairs because it like you can not develop like if you put them in the chair too much they won't they're back on development like that's the theory behind it or whatever right mm. and um i was like scared to post it because i was like somebody's gonna judge me for that's like wild. having him in a chair i haven't even thought of that that is why but I, but that's how people are right now yeah. it's like it's judge you you get judged for everything I just and i'm just so like this. nervous about yeah. everything yeah. like how it's also, people it's unsolicited. see us like no one asks you to say anything to me true and so, you think you might think you're like helping helping but you're not no yeah and it, the mommy groups are really scary i i feel bad because people get like attacked like crazy in them That's but wild. at the same time there are some things that like i get triggered by when i see yeah. somebody post about them and like for me it's the safety stuff yeah so um one of the things that and if you do this i'm not like judging you in any capacity it's just something that like freaks me the fuck out is bed sharing mm. when you have the baby in bed yeah, with you yeah, yeah, yeah. as a newborn yeah. is I, like it gives me anxiety yeah to know that that is happening in a house somewhere where yeah. <laughs> like it just like one blanket in the wrong position could yeah. just like kill your child yeah. and that just is scary on that me. note though if you are a new parent and you need someone to vent to someone to like ask a question we have a lovely group in our discord uh, yeah, it's called do. mommy questions oh, yeah. it's not just for mommies but it's for any parent if you yeah. need someone to talk to some advice from other fellow parents dog please moms join too. us dog moms yep. too Cat moms. join us over on the discord everybody there is so kind and so helpful mm-hmm. seeing erica with her new baby asking questions in there everyone was so great and yeah. no one was judgmental in any way which is why i, I appreciate that. all of them so much we also have a mental health um chat chat in as there well. as yeah. well so people any, utilize anything. that a lot yeah I think oh, well mostly really about great. like work I yeah feel like it's a lot it's usually of work, work stuff. which yeah but or just things in life if, if you know if you need someone just to vent into the void you'll always have an ear yeah or a eyes with i think our, <laughs> our discord is definitely one of the best places to do that so just click the link in our uh our we have link a link tree. tree in our instagram um if you're not like a uh, somebody who listens to this podcast regularly it's books underscore n underscore betches b-e-t-c-h-e-s this mm-hmm. is a if wild you need help podcast at all, to come into yeah if you need any help at all getting into it if you feel like you're confused yeah. reach out to us on instagram we'll happily help you yeah. i will happily help you <laughs> if anybody wants to chat about you know anxiety and medication i would be very yeah very grateful for that we're conversation all, we're all here to help 
help and like like i said we try to um answer everybody's messages the only ones that we don't answer is if you're like hey will you promote my book on your yeah. podcast yeah. and it's like well probably not um <laughs> moving on so uh, <laughs> you've literally never listened to our podcast once yeah but, um if you're genuine we'll consider yeah but yeah. very rarely mm-hmm. um but anyways the i um what was i gonna say the postpartum has been pretty good and i the one thing that i do want to like just touch on and this is not talking shit about my husband in Mm -hmm. any capacity but like i think everyone needs to brace for a shift in their marriage Mm -hmm. um i don't think i think i gave i don't want to say i gave john too much credit but like i gave our relationship too much credit that like we were so solid that like Mm. nothing would change right like that we're like we're so good that like i'm not worried about this like we're fine and like the things that you didn't think would be problems are problems and like you get into art like we've me and john have never fought so much in these last four months in our entire seven years that's so and that's not any knock to me or knock to john it's just hard like, well, you're navigating raising this, a kid is yeah, hard you both don't know t- technically you don't know what you're doing you're learning and yeah. it's a you whole to, new environment yeah it's a whole new third person to think of not just yourselves Definitely you're like you're respect. like four steps ahead of your husband always because you're the mom and like you know they they you carried this thing for nine months like he's so detached from it like mm. he's catching up to some degree like there's just so many th- other things at play and i think that that's something that took me off guard a little bit and that's i'm not again not like this isn't like a knock to john i think and no. i've talked to other people about this and they've had similar experiences with mm, their husbands it makes sense and it's not and the go- here's the thing the good guys will change yes their behavior yes you say hey this is bothering me i want i like i xyz and you see the change the and good that's partners the good partners will take that and not take it to like a personal attack they'll take it as a a critique to better ourselves together as a unit exactly and that's what i would hope yeah. i think the bad guys unfortunately will say oh yeah for sure do it for do a day nothing. and then yeah. do nothing or yeah. do nothing at all or just offload the mental strain on you yeah be like well what do you want me to do then just tell me what you want it's like no just think for yourself for a second exactly yeah. yeah yeah so you know in the mental the mental workload of the household is is very much on my shoulders which is yeah. tough I think that's why I'm like debating having kids the most is because I feel like I'm going to end up having some sort of like anxiety issue afterwards. Mm-hmm. Like that is my biggest fear. I, I'm pretty sure I'd become a helicopter mom. It's scary. Well, it's I'm really scared scary. I'll like die in birth. Like that is my biggest. That like, too. I really think something bad will happen. But like I mean, my anxiety. Like you mentioned you had some panic had, attacks, right? I had two. I I'm going to be uploading my birth story um, on oh, our cool. Patreon. I love that. So it's like a 45 minute video. It's a pretty long video nice. of like everything that happened. Um, Brace yourself though. So if you, <laughs> yeah, it's tr- it's a little traumatic. Um, I had a pretty traumatic birth. I ended up with a um, emergency C section, and I had two panic attacks. See, that's so. I, like I know I would have panic attacks, and like, I told them. I, I think that's f- very common, though. I, I had my like, first, like yeah. yeah. I, if anyone goes in, I mean, if you are, damn, I need your brain power. But yeah. like, I think in general. It's something you have never gone through. You have no idea what it's going to be like. Right. Of course, you're gonna feel like freaked out yeah, by it. Yeah. So they missed my epidural twice. That's that's my the biggest, biggest fear. fear. <laughs> that was my biggest fear. Yeah, that was my biggest fear. <laughs> and I feel the fucking sh- a shoot of pain up my spine <gasps> as they miss it. So uh, I fucking lose my mind yeah. because that's what I was so scared of. And I had that panic attack. That was really that was a real that was the worst panic attack I've oh ever had in my, my life. God. Um. Not. Um, I should have said trigger on this, but sorry. Um. And then when I had my emergency C-section, I told them, they came in there like, we should do a C-section. I go, great, I'm going to have a panic attack on this table. Yeah. So get the Xanax ready because I'm and about to And they can't give you it, right? It. They couldn't give it to me until the baby was out. Because wow. anything to lower your heart rate will lower the, the baby's, baby's heart, heart rate. rate. I'm going to be fucked, Which is dude. why she was in a problem in the, in the beginning because of the heart rate. See, that's what I'm saying. Like, I would be fucked. My heart rate is always yeah, already Yeah, your heart high. It does not like Like, you. I don't know what... That's why I'm so if he, i mean there's a lot of reasons but that's one of the biggest reasons is like i don't know if i can handle it. then don't <laughs> it's yeah, scary it's like being a mom scary in general like yeah. i've never felt fear like you have with your child you have to be mentally strong and i don't know if i'm in a place where i'm mentally strong enough to have a kid right now it's scary and i like i am no trigger like for anything i cannot 
I don't think I could read infant death anymore. Yeah. Like I don't think I could read miscarriage. I don't think I could read infant death. Like I have to check trigger warnings now because I, there's a few things that's fair that I just don't think I can handle right now. And that's totally fair. And I did not, I mean, obviously if I accidentally come across, I'll fucking live, but like, yeah, it's something you're, you're thinking about more yeah, now. Avoid it it's beginning. something that I didn't care about before. And now I don't think I can do growth. Mm. <laughs> we change or it's interesting We're but yeah that i thought that was i think that's really good and beneficial for a lot of people and again our discord is open and available our dms for are open who wants to join just click that link tree yeah. but anything else we want to add maria do you want do you want to bring on my anything? end it's the same thing as yours like no motivation yeah i just sit around and do nothing do you think it has anything to do with like the weather like oh yeah seasonal depression is my bitch every year yeah every year she comes in and ruins everything mm -hmm. and i try i try to work out yeah but when it's it hits hard. it hits it's hard it's yeah. hard hopefully the the winter will be but what sucks with this winter is that it keeps playing yes. me yes i know like we one day this. we have 60 degree weather and i'm like oh that's yep. it i'm out the sun's coming yeah you know and then the next day it's like down and i love rain mm -hmm. rain is fine but it's like I don't know what it is. Just the 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 the, 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 and the ebb and flow of this of this season has not been the best. And then it comes with like the the work stress mm -hmm. and you know it's mentally going straining. Into, I, honestly, I think you going back into the office as much as it's annoying is going to help your mental I health. Also no, I know, I know it's fine. My dad says the same thing. He's going to laugh when he hears that. He's like, <laughs> "See, I told you, you're going to be fine. Just going to the office." <laughs> I've also I told my friend this. I've been preparing myself for this mm -hmm. for a couple months. So they said it last June that they want us back in the office. I love to work from home. It works. It helps my creativity the best to work from home. Mm -hmm. But I also know I can time manage. So if I have to go into the office and lose a couple hours because of distraction, then that's what's going to have to happen. Yeah. What I don't like is the fucking payment of it. Yeah. I, I live my life under a budget and... That's the biggest problem. 400 bucks a month on a train is not my friend. I, I don't like it at all. And yeah, then the food... Sucks is a lot and it's just it's an expense i don't want to have to deal with i totally get that for two sure. hour each way is life that i'm not going to get back when i was in the office every day i had no life that's the problem i never saw anyone yeah the i commute. had no friends the commute is the problem yeah you lose so much of your time you there. gotta go on dates in the city Fuck that shit. <laughs> i'm not going on dates in the city and you have to get audiobooks on cue. Well, I read the most when I was yeah. on, like, on the train. Yeah, I feel like you're that'll be, be good. Reading, you're going to be reading so much. Yeah. It'll be really good. And you got to go on dates. Yeah, we only have to go three times a week. So yeah. it's fine. I'll You'll get to see your friends. I think it, I, I also agree with Erica. I think it's going to suck at first, but then it's going to be Again, good. Again, I've been preparing myself. I've yeah. gone a couple of times already. Good. And, but I, just, I haven't worked when I'm there. Yeah. Like, there's no way I can sit and work. Like my desk is right next to a, uh, a conference room. Mm -hmm. Nice to two conference rooms. Mm -hmm. People walk around my desk constantly. We're talking full on high volume conversations yeah. around me constantly. Mm -hmm. Other people are editing, show their cuts to people in, in the office. So I'm hearing everybody's cuts. I'm hearing yeah. everybody talk. I'm hearing people's phones ring. It is People hard. are now taking meetings at their desks. There's not enough conference rooms. I'm just like, for my job, it ain't it. Yeah. I know. I, to I totally agree. I know exactly what you're saying. But so yeah i think a lot of people love remote work and i like remote work but i need to be in the office i like need to go back to the office we go in twice a month and it's perfect i think twice a month would be great for it's me it's perfect i get to see people i have do to go things. back in yeah yeah i would do gladly if once I had a kid, I'd go once back. or twice a week <laughs> yeah once i think twice. that's fine yeah i think what i think is make all my meetings that day mm-hmm and I'll talk to everybody then because like the, the the problem I'm coming across is the whole like building a culture and like yeah we're you, a collaborate no you're not yeah well, I'm not collaborative yeah I do my cut my way and then when I finish my cut I'll show you and that's not my cut anymore once you give me notes mm -hmm. I'm not collaborating with anyone yeah I'm a solitary person that's fair with my with my work if I was a manager sure totally. I guess yeah you have to see your your freaking employees so you can micromanage them hey but <laughs> manager hey. i mean you're not a micromanager but thank you <laughs> i i feel like that's what's, that's what's happening the managers don't know what yeah. to do with themselves because they're being paid to micromanage well a lot of it too is just like coming from the, yeah. the upper management yes yeah, from the bosses that don't you know. do our jobs yeah totally 100 <laughs> yeah. percent. don't know anything about anything yeah and i think my the problem with my company is i'm being lumped in with everybody else yeah not just the creative services department mm -hmm. but also the accountants and wow, the lawyers yeah and any other like you know and it ops. should be per department. it should be per department oh, depending on yeah. what your workload is yeah 
but they're making everybody no matter what you do that's wild and it's like me. you should look at what we're doing exactly. and how my job is affected by and, it, and, that, and the thing is you can't give me the, the excuse of like well you did it before it's like no even before when we yeah. were five days a week it wasn't conducive to a good environment exactly i don't like oh, that's the thing that i do not like is like we did it before um I, I hear that a lot whether it's work whether it's anything that happened pre-pandemic people they say well we used to do it this way and it's like well we don't anymore we yep. have decided and we have learned that this is a better way of doing it we don't need to keep saying well we did it this way before just because it sucked before doesn't mean it needs to suck suck now and i feel for those who don't get the privilege i know it's a privilege to be able to work from home i know it's a dumb thing to bitch about but like at the same time like why wouldn't we try to better ourselves and our futures and the things that we're doing or why wouldn't you at least show some empathy towards your employees yep Yep. i think that i think that um they think this is such an old school train of thought is that like if you're home you're fucking off yeah like work from home you're not working i work so much harder you there's studies show that you actually work more when you work from home because you're like you're not coming in and like going to get coffee you're not walking around the office you're You're not talking to people you're like always accessible you end up working later because you don't close your laptop exactly like when you're leaving work you're leaving work at five and you're like fuck this Mm yep versus like oh i can send that one extra email like i'm not going anywhere i've Mm -hmm. created some of my best stuff because i was home and i had the time i don't think i would be where i am creatively in my job yeah if it wasn't for my time at home when i had the big note to redo an entire promo in a day Mm -hmm. i worked i think 18 hours that day yeah if I didn't have that home life, mm-hmm. I would not be able to do it. No, I totally yeah, agree. Because you have to go home. Yeah, exactly. You have to fucking go home. <laughs> I have to go Nobody home. wants to be at the office for 18 But hours. I was able to get up at 5 a.m., yeah. work all the way, not have lunch, not have dinner, mm-hmm. and cut that shit in a day. The thing is, wow. and this is what like I will fucking... I, I, I do believe we should be going back into the office some of the time, but here's the thing. You should have the flex. People want the flexibility. Yeah, that's People all I want. want. Yeah. Flexibility. That's all I they want. want to be able to work from home mm-hmm. when they have to, and they want like not going if they're sick. You they, know, they yeah. want the autonomy yeah. to do that when they need to do it. I've, totally. al- I've always said, it's if you just gave me the choice, I would work with you. Mm-hmm. But the fact that you're forcing me like I'm a ten year old, yes, that's where you're getting the rebellion. And it's wild. Of me. We just spent like all of our lives being okay with like the way because that it the was. status quo. I've been yeah. saying the office has ruined lives since the '60s. Yeah. It's yeah. the 40s. You're right. Yeah. I hate the office. It's and not they, good. They don't, the society doesn't like that it's shifting. They don't like that people are starting yeah. to realize the that they don't want to be miserable. Like. like the amount of people that are like, oh, people don't want to work anymore. It's like, no, people don't want to be miserable anymore. Yeah. And I'm sorry that you don't like that. But yeah. that's just the way it and is. And people who say you don't want to work anymore are those who are at the top. It, it, my favorite who don't have to work like we do my favorite is i was at a grocery store and the line was really long and some old guy was like oh people just don't want to work anymore and it took everything in me to say well you don't want to pay them either like you're the damn same straight you're the same person that disagrees yeah. with a livable wage damn so you straight. get your fucking pizza sit in that line like the yes. rest of us you preach it ass. anyway that's where we ended up <laughs> <laughs> um i don't know i this is good i like this this is a nice venting set yeah that's my update i mean my update yeah. is not so much just the work from home thing i think we we railed into that but it's more so like i'm looking for more motivation to get out of bed Mm -hmm. and get off my couch i love my couch same (laughs) and we're in the same uh, boat yeah that's about it i don't know if i'm going to talk to a therapist anytime soon i think i'm still in that mindset of like i'll fix it myself i got it we'll see if it happens (laughs) stop doing that don't do that yeah don't, I don't, I, don't do it marina i don't know man <laughs> it's hard to find a therapist yeah i feel that and I, I hate insurance yeah i hate insurance they're the fucking worst it's a scam i fucking hate insurance <sighs> and on that note <sighs> thanks for joining us <laughs> <laughs> um again message us discord us whatever all those things we're really eager to hear from y'all and just appreciate you being on this journey with us and allowing us to do these episodes and like you know being okay like being like yeah we like that um that, that makes me it feel means the world to us when we get yeah. messages about it so yeah so we appreciate y'all and we love you and we'll be back next week with another book maybe i don't know we'll see yeah i don't know what's gonna come out <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens we'll see you next week though bye bye, bye guys